Okay, so that, that's where the, the diagram comes from in Lonergan, and it's like the baseball diamond. This turns it around, and I, I don't know, do you find it sort of sufficiently convenient? This is consumer goods, this is machine tools, and then here you have the redistributive function with all those complexities in it. Yeah, and again, it depends on each of you how you read the middle. You've seen uh, televised shots of Wall Street. Maybe you've been in there. You've bought and sold a house. You know exactly how much you lose on that transaction. Everyone seems to be snatching something. And many of you have had the experience of buying or selling a house. And the add-ons are amazing. And, and, you know, it's been surveyed for 500 years, and yet they call in somebody else to do the same surveying. Many of you have had that fun experience. So that's another $500. And you sort of say, but look, I know where the house is. <laughs> oh, no, we have to have a survey. <laughs> okay. So uh, redistributive function. Now, what I w would like us to do is talk about this in relation to Manhattan. Uh, as I say, e each person can read this differently, and perhaps you can read it according to your own town, but Manhattan seems to be convenient. Uh, that this analysis is a factual analysis of the economic mess that is Manhattan. Okay? Leaving out the numbers. What is going on economically in Manhattan, as a matter of fact? Uh, these flows. And uh, you can identify any exchange with this diagram. And this diagram, if you're working metaphysically, includes implicitly all the exchanges. But, but that's not easy to, to come to grips with. Uh, have I got a few uh, risk takers? Uh, yeah? S some of you bought lunch. Yeah, so uh, there was an exchange of a certain number of dollars to, I don't know, a machine, a, a deli person. Some of you may have rushed out, checked NASDAQ, <laughs> and phoned your broker. <laughs> okay. Some of you may have gone to the money machine. Yeah. So money has gone this way. Either money that you have actually got in the bank, or <laughs> it's on your overdraft. <laughs> Uh, okay. Uh, any uh, random discussion of that? Uh, it's, it's, it's the problem of noticing what reading this means. Uh, and it's the problem of reading this book. That uh, he's asking you to think of whatever economy is familiar to you and spread out from there. Uh, do, do you see the, the, the curious challenge? He's inviting you to see the world with a new vision. In Method and Theology, he talks about the zoologist bringing his son to the zoo, and they both look at the, the giraffe, and the son sees something that bites and kicks, and the zoologist is looking at a network of functions. Yeah. The Lonergan zoologist is looking at the zoologist in the perspective of uh, a flexible circle of ranges of schemes of recurrence, which is the phrase he uses uh, about the animal. Okay? And you have that perspective. Uh, I, I could get distracted into that because it's a very important topic in trying to figure out the new systematic theology, which we'll get to tonight, or systematic economics. What is a systematic economics? 
I might as well get distracted into it now. We have the, the notion of a systematics that we get from Newton. Uh, if you studied Newton, and many of you did physics sometime yeah, in your primitive past, very good, one out of, well, that's not bad, two, three, four, five, okay. So uh, you think of something like the, the, the three laws of Newton, which are remarkable achievements. Uh, the body in a state of rest, etc., and basically the force is equal to mass by acceleration. Then you can set up a sort of a deductive system. With these three equations, you can handle in an elementary fashion uh, stones falling off buildings, stones thrown, moving in a parabolic orbit. Uh, planets going round the Earth in an elliptic orbit, a <coughs> uh, hyperbolic orbit of uh, fragments moving through space that we see in these great films of crises. Yeah, it's coming for us. Yeah? Did you all go and see the tidal wave washing away Manhattan? You didn't. Keep this arm again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. I was disappointed with that because I was waiting for it after 10 minutes, you know, and they dragged it out with the usual <laughs> suffering dog and all that sort of stuff. <laughs> okay. So, so where are we with our Armageddon? Yeah, I, I really want you to <laughs> uh, to see can you react to, to, to this uh, in that perspectival fashion. Now, my analogy for this, I, I want to talk about system. Newton's system is only one system. Okay. What is systematic? Physics. It's a sequence of systems. Okay? Closer to uh, comprehension, perhaps, is what is the system of a dog? I mentioned the giraffe. Okay? The systematic biology of a giraffe includes an account of the sequence of systems from egg right onwards. Okay? Uh, and there's a magnificent analysis of that in insight, except it's far too compact. And there's another doctorate thesis. Joe, have you found anyone interested in doing that doctorate thesis? It's a tough cookie, eh? Yeah? To get somebody to do genetic method. You have somebody in Boston who, who, who did genetic method. I told him to go on with it, Lewis, and he did it with economics. So I, I was pushing him to do it, do it just with the plant because nobody else has done it. <laughs> yeah, uh, it, it, it's, it's a terrific gap, and modern biology of plant and animal has, has lost that dimension that was present 40 years ago in people like Waddington. They knew that understanding the plant was the dynamics of growth. Okay, I, I'm, I'm working towards a perspective here. Uh, I, I mentioned reading, say, Rome from this perspective, uh, and there is literature on the economy of Rome. Uh, you have people in the Annals School doing details of the economy of France over weeks and decades and so on. It's a very strange type of uh, analysis. I remember once reading an article on the analysis of Lent in a French village in about 1490 uh, and the rhythms of payments and that. And it was just the same as my own village in Ireland because they had the Wednesday fast and the Friday fish. And <laughs> you sort of felt, well, I could have told them all that <laughs> without digging around in the archives of the, uh, the, the Loire. Uh, okay, so uh, the notion of a system or a systematic understanding that we normally entertain is the one we get from Newton. It doesn't fit the dog or the cat or the giraffe. It doesn't fit theology, and yet there's a, a sense that we're going to get a new system in theology that's going to replace Aquinas. Uh, 
Systematic theology and systematic economics is a systematic understanding of all the economic systems in a sequence, reversing the warped systems, okay? Think of, of, say, taking the economists from pre-Plato on, writing up their stuff on a page. This is the basic economic perspective of Plato, Aristotle, etc. And then the Chinese and the Indian and so on, the Egyptian. Now you put the, 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 the pages in sequence and you correct the mistaken systems. <coughs> In Lonergan's terms, they are counterpositional. There's something good about them, but there's a twist in it. So what do you end up? You end up with a corrected set of all the systems. This is a colossal project, isn't it? But this is what systematic economics has to emerge as in the 25th century. Now, what does that give you? It gives you a basis of selection for applications. I mentioned Inca farming and Chinese farming uh, and uh, layered cultivation of mountain edges uh, may be enormously relevant in Sweden uh, with global warming, yeah? Uh, so the, the human effort, which I'll get to uh, after dinner, is to do the best we can towards having a global understanding of the possibilities of improvement, okay? Now, to, to bring that home concretely, think of uh, Martina Navratilova on the baseline. Yeah. Uh, when I think of this, I thought this out when I was in Mexico as an illustration because two years ago I was in Mexico and Martina Hingis was, was running for the title in Wimbledon and I was lecturing from four until eight and Wimbledon was on in the morning in Mexico. So I could watch Wimbledon and then prepare my lectures and head out to the university. But it happened the previous summer that it rained through most of Wimbledon. So instead of watching the tennis, they were interviewing Billie Jean King and Martina Navratilova about tennis, and it was very illuminating. And Martina was saying that really she was a much better ten tennis player now, but her body wasn't fast enough. Now, what is the challenge of a good tennis player? The challenge is to absorb the history of their playing and absorb it like I'm talking about systematics so that they have an integral genetic perspective on their own performance right up to this baseline. Okay? Uh, I, I love associating that with page 727 of the old insight about line 30 where Lonergan is talking about hope and the, the possibility that we would become in the Christian community a sufficient auxiliary to implement, yeah? To really be on the baseline ready to meet the serve. And as he used to say regularly, in the 19th century, Marx was in the British Museum working away, and the trouble with the Christian community is there was nobody sitting in the British Museum. There's a sense in which we are very easily, we tend to rest on our faith. I've studied journals on marketing in various libraries, and it, to me it's a great scandal that there's far more energy going into marketing soap than marketing salvation. Uh, the, the pastoral theology isn't in the same ballpark at all. The, the, the hard thinking that goes into selling your brand of whatever, uh, and you see it in these journals. Well, now that, that's, that's the issue that Lonergan faced in method and theology. And it remains to see will there be any implementation.
But what I'm getting at is the notion of a systematic economics that will be mediated by this so that a global community of systematic economists will be collaborating with those in the field of executive reflection in micro zones, like Lonergan talks about the micro gardening. Now this is at a complete remove from the economic texts. The nearest hope here are the, the non-government organizations, the small communes in the third world zones. And an occasional little flicker uh, of creativity in uh, the first world. Uh, I know in Canada we have an appalling psychology of um, economy. Jane Jacobs wrote a little book about Quebec and she mentions in it that if the Canadian economy was an, a zoo, it would be full of elephants. And my own addition is they would be mostly white elephants. Uh, our, our, our setup there is so remarkably stuck in exporting basic materials that you, you buy a pair of skis in Canada and it's made in Sweden with Canadian wood. <laughs> well, probably you are better off in... <laughs> but you have all those funny things here that Jane Jacobs criticizes that, you know, instead of moving this zone up to an industrial level, you invent something away down here and you have to move all the stuff. Uh, okay, now, uh, so you see this is the seed uh, of a quite new perspective on the history of economics, uh, the systematics of economics, etc. But the first task is to get people who will take this seriously uh, as a melody, a rhythm, that, that this is worth contemplating, yeah? Far more than the Mona Lisa. You heard about the New Yorker who arrived in Paris Parks rushed up the steps, grabbed the doorkeeper of the Louvre and said, show me the Mona Lisa, I'm double parked. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's see, can we have a little exercise of that pre-systematics? But do you get the notion I'm pushing for, that the full systematics is a global integration of seeing Manhattan, Taiwan, Australia, Ireland, yeah? And then seeing them in history. And, and that's a global task. Uh, Lonergan's entire push from, certainly from 53 on, was towards a division of labor. Uh, he, he knew in teaching theology that this was a joke. He was covering all sorts of disciplines to a multitude of people. I don't know how many people in the class in the Greg, it's probably about 300 clerics. Uh, so the, the, the need is for a, a, a division of labor that is subtly collaborative. And uh, as I point out in the introduction to this book, that's what's going to beat the economists by bringing forward a new history of economics based on this.